Now, as far as the absolute incident which you are speaking about, which is the moment of the arrest, you have seen about it. You've seen it on television, I'm sure, but you've seen perhaps one percent of it. That's a period of my life I have not spoken about in detail. Pushing me with the butt of their weapons, hitting me in the crotch, yeah, yeah. physically assaulting me, thrashing me through the way, right? not even letting me wear my shoes locking me up in the loo of a jail doing things which are unbelievable if i did not compromise in 2011 when the entire congress government tried to put pressure on me when i was the editor of times now then why would i compromise now this was physical namaste jai hind welcome to another edition of ani podcast with smita prakash Today my guest is controversy's favorite child Arnab Goswami. Joining me in this podcast is my colleague Ishan Prakash who began his career 12 years ago in Tribune and then under Arnab Goswami in Times Now. Arnab thank you very much for coming to our my studio. Pleasure. Uh it feels a little odd me asking you the questions. You are the one who's always asking mm. questions. But uh you know when we started this podcast it was everybody's first comment on the on YouTube mm. and on uh, on all the <laughs> other channels is when are you getting Arnab? When are you getting Arnab? Remember even when I was starting it I was like Arnab ko to lana jaldi se. Okay. So now you <laughs> are this journalist who I have not seen anybody having such a huge fan following <laughs> at the same time there is so much of envy hate jealousy and adoration how does that rest on your shoulders it's not resting <laughs> i don't know i don't know see i've been away for too long from lutians delhi hmm. so i left the city um 2004 hmm. it's been 18 years it's a long time you know so when i come back i come back like today you know once a month once in two months i hear these things here Because when I'm in Mumbai, I don't hear anything. I'm literally in my newsroom, so the conversation does not happen where I am, so it doesn't affect me. And where I am, it's home and studio, home and studio. So I don't have much time to think about all these things. These are the things I hear about when I come here. But you do know, you do know that uh, you know. You, I mean, wherever you go, there are like so many people who come around you asking for selfies, and then you are like in social media also hero worshipped as well as like that you're the man who broke the news. Mm. there's been a lot of conversation i must yeah. there's been a lot of conversation when it first happened when 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 around 2007 8 you know when the conversation sort of began to increase around around me not where i was working for it was a new thing but around 2009 10 sort of it 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 settled and then i realized that i don't i don't need to think much about the conversation i need to do my job mm -hmm. so i do my job and uh, yeah that's it there's not much to think about So uh let me start from the beginning did you did you ever think you know a uh, young lad in guwahati growing up and then after that cantonment life and then delhi university you even written about it about mm. your life in delhi university mm. and did you think that you know you would reach the pinnacle of television news in india no way <laughs> no no way i never thought i'd reach the pinnacle of anything mm. it was more about you know uh, doing well enough i guess you know being above average and then just plodding along <laughs> plodding along you know these things are accidental this mm -hmm. uh, what you call success is ephemeral accidental occasional and one shouldn't take it too seriously because then you begin to uh, have what i call an exaggerated sense of self importance you know <laughs> you believe you are born for success i have no such pretensions so I think it's okay. I have never planned anything. No. I didn't even plan to yeah. be a journalist. It just one thing leads to the other, and you sort of move along. You do, do the best. When thing I possible. first met you, twenty-seven, twenty-eight years ago, uh, you know, you and your wife, both of you, and I were young journalists, yeah. you know, starting out in life yeah. and things. Even then, I didn't. Uh, e even in my wildest dreams, I didn't think you were one of those ambitious ones. You know, you you kind of like yeah. going through life. both of you getting your uh, yeah. you know uh, understanding what tv journalism was you joined star ndtv thought that yahi pe like other journalists in ndtv 25 26 years yahi pe nikal jayenge mm. no i never thought of nikal jayenge ki rehna hai this that you know i have always i have always just been the kind who sort of has moved from one thing to the other uh, i did want to learn how to run a tv channel because i i thought how complicated is it really 
you know, uh, what goes into it. Uh, so I was a keen observer. I used to observe how things go beyond what I do. Mm. I was interested in the bigger picture. So I wasn't very taken with my byline. I wasn't very taken with my piece two camera. So I was interested in the big picture. So I've always eager to understand how the how the operations run, how the organization runs, how the back end runs, and uh, and that is where I actually learnt a lot and where I where I picked up a lot. But nothing extraordinary, Smita. You know, there is no narrative to my story. It is just that you know I came into Delhi after my after my college. I came back to Delhi. I did my job, stayed here nine years, left, went to Bombay, been there eighteen years. That's it. No. शुरू से कैसे स्टार्ट हुआ एंड हाउ यू मूव इन टू टेलीविजन हाउ यू टू लीडरशिप रोल इन टेलीविजन You know, if you can just so expand background, on background. that. Background. Yeah. No, no, I'm yeah. getting yeah. it, and you know, Smita is getting it wrong. She's thinking I'm trying to be unnecessarily <laughs> humble. I'm just trying to figure out if there is a narrative no, of no. the kind she's trying to seek. There is one. We'll come to that. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. We'll come. We'll start. No, with she this she was asking me, uh, is there a, uh, is there a, was there a great grand plan, or was there, as mm. you call it, a, a, a grand strategy? No, <laughs> I don't Visual. think. Yeah. No. So no, I, what yeah. I'm telling you, there wasn't. One. There I mean, was, let's. Yeah. There wasn't one. True. Good things happen sometimes. Bad things happen. and you go along with it and sometimes you are also in the right place at the right time mm. it's a function of all of that uh, so you you were telling me about the okay, chronology man. yes chronology is simple see uh, my f- i'll take you f- even further beyond my father was in the army he's uh, he's from uh, he was from the madras sappers uh, and so i grew up in uh, various cantonments non cantonments changed seven schools mm. uh, finally i was in delhi in mount st mary's did my csc did my cbsc from kendra vidyalaya jabalpur came back here did 3 years in hindu college stayed wow. in north campus 2 years in the hostel got lucky got a scholarship went to oxford did a masters in social anthropology came back uh, 94 mm-hmm. and uh, didn't quite figure what one needs to do realized that i was not uh, i didn't have the qualifications for a academic job for a full time academic job mm-hmm. so i had options of doing a phd i had I I was in that track to do a PhD, but that would require me to commit five six years. So I thought I'd be I'd be in my late twenties mm-hmm. by the time I finished. So I opted out of that, kept it on hold, came back, came to Delhi, couldn't find the right job. Met Swapan Das Gupta in Express, met Chandan Mitra in Hindustan Times. You know, uh, very helpful, very so nice. So you had an inkling that journalism is your calling. No, it was the only thing I thought I could do. Okay. You know, right. I mean it's the. I wasn't qualified for anything else <laughs> at that time. I had a, I had a postgraduate degree in some in social anthropology. Okay. You know, so the uh, there wasn't any there is a there's yes. no career track to so being a social anthropologist. Very esoteric uh, degree. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. yeah it, so I didn't have no, a track. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I, I mean, then I thought that okay, uh, we'll try out in journalism. Print mm-hmm. journalism was the only thing. Right. Couldn't get the right job in Delhi. I hung around here for two to three months. Went around almost to all the offices. Got through some places, got but didn't get the break. So then I got to Cal- went to Calcutta. I remember Swapan Das Gupta told me, sitting in the Express office, he was deputy editor. Mm. He said, "You won't get the right break here. You go there." And Chandan Mitra told me that son, you uh, what have you done? Study. So I said, "I've studied social anthropology." So he said, "You you write a piece for me, uh, op-ed or editorial piece on uh, your interpretation of caste, mm-hmm. which was at that point of time a big issue in the Indian Mandal politics." Th- you know, so I wrote a piece. Yeah. he I remember him telling me it's very academic hmm. because i had i had that was uh, your background you it was my background so if someone yeah. told me about caste i would think about louis dumo uh, uh, french structural theory my whole interpretation understanding of caste was academic and as a young person you are what you are you come straight from the yes. campus so then he said that with all of this you go to telegraph because he said you'll get a job i got a job in telegraph i was put in the editorial page and uh, so i hung around there for about a year little under a year yeah then i came back hmm. yeah I started looking for opportunities here. The one option was to go back into academia. Mm-hmm. That has always been my life story, you know, go back to academia. But again, I came back here. Mm-hmm. I got a couple of jobs, and uh, mm-hmm. what date are we looking at right now? Ninety. Ninety-three, I think. No, Or no, 94? no. Ninety-five. By mm-hmm. now, it's ninety-five, and I got a job same day in two places. 
one pl- one was outlook hmm. outlook the where magazine. i met padmanand ja ha i didn't get to meet vinod mehta i met padmanand ja it was a virtual offer not a re- hand like a not a letter i got hmm. but he said i'll give you an offer and uh, then i met appan menon at ndtv oh okay hmm. and somehow i liked appan a lot hmm. Hmm. I know he was very nice yeah, yeah. you know so i was uh, not sure i didn't know delhi much so i felt very i found him very warm and he took a great interest in me hmm. so i met him i met pranay and radhika i think very briefly and, and you wow. were on beach journalism immediately yeah you yeah did. i mean there's, there's, i didn't even know what i was no doing no desk i remember stay. i no 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 nothing i remember uh, i i was taken to do you know as assistant with some reporters to go and see how stories happened yeah yeah i did that But could you tell that TV was going to be the future? Was was that conversation being had because Z TV had entered, E TV had entered, you know, the market in the mid to early, late nineties at that time. N D T V was already NDTV established. N D T V was there. Aaj tak was also there. Uh, N D T V was in, in English. In it was already established by then. I occasionally felt that the stories have impact. Hmm. Occasionally. Television. occasionally yeah. so i found the occasion when the stories had impact but the stories were not aimed at having any impact hmm. the stories were aimed at completing the 24 minutes on a bulletin right there was no passion there was no heart it was structure so the if standard you know what i mean run down you know yeah, it was yeah, a standard yeah. run down yeah so i wasn't if you ask me was i very uh, thrilled at what i was doing i wasn't but i like the chase you know i like meeting people i like going to party offices i like meeting people i like having chats um you reimagine news when you went to times now the entire model that you created mm. did not exist at all there were several channels then already and when you did times now you we saw a different kind of news bulletin a news bulletin not seen so far on any hindi or english channel so what what did you want to do i mean here was this the anchor who was a participant in everything you changed uh, actually if you look back smita at the last my last 9 months at ndtv hmm. was a time when i was first given my own show it was called news night it was at 8:30 and that show if you if you check with anyone in that time because viewership i think had started getting measured somewhere but it had a compelling audience because what i did was i just did a debate and there was no debate there was this easy kind of consensus how oh, we all like each other let's meet tomorrow how oh, what do you think what do i think this rather fake and artificial attempt at uh, putting people like us in a studio and then having a chat i have come from an academic world so i find that that the the fakeness of it the fake yeah. intellectual pretensions i i i'm not very fond of them uh so i taken a break to go back to cambridge after i was at oxford i spent time i i wrote a book by 2003 when ndtv started i got a show otherwise i would have quit by then but uh, that show did exceptionally well because because i realized that th- there needs to be conflict for any conversation to be true and ideas generation and what no there needs to be there mm. needs to be different perspectives yeah and the perspectives need not coalesce into something there needs to be a diversity of opinion and we must not be afraid of that you know it's just yeah. like when i was in school i was a very very good debater and i always found debating far more exciting than elocution Mm. and i found if you ask me what i what i really did to television i turned a constant elocution competition into a debate that's what yeah. i did but those last 9 months on news night was was very exciting for me because mm. because uh, smita i would i would get the guess i would i would uh, write the script i would uh, i would think it through i would think of the structure of the debate i would think of the four or five high points of the debate because you see smita I am a professional debater. Hmm. I have been one of the best debaters in school and college. That's all I do well. I do nothing else well. <laughs> <laughs> my academic degrees are just now you know, an entrepreneur passing. as well. So the point is, I turned <laughs> that. I turned my yeah. passion into yeah. a subject. Yeah. But again, after the the sheer process of launching Times Now, 
raising investment for times now building a channel from scratch construction stage onwards recruiting it was thrilling from a uh, organizational learning point of view but i didn't quite start off with the debate for the debate to come into times now it needed an ambiance and that ambiance happened somewhere around 2007 2008 when there were subjects which came up accidentally as i say in the course of the debate in the course of the news coverage which provoked one to think so actually what happened was that the between the launch between my leaving ndtv in 2004 my launching times now in 2006 january and uh, the format of the debate appearing in its incipient form somewhere in 2007 uh, there was a period of a lull because i was i was too caught up in building a organization or rather say founding an organization and breaking news you uh, i know that you caused uh, everybody you caused a disruption in the business in a way because we all were suddenly competing with each other like you said you know this this consensus period was over it was like times now going to break it times now reporters <laughs> going to be there so other channels were like okay i mean there was this understanding 6:30 baje 8:30 baje we'll do the news you know that the the big news will come in around that time but you were like you had put your reporters everywhere that aggressive brand of journalism is what you brought in and you were fighting in your newsroom why so and so got this <laughs> thing first you know like Yeah, the the rumors of him fighting are true. Yeah, <laughs> he's been. He's been. Let me ask you, Smita. Wait, wait. Okay, so if I can say that when you wanted, you know, Ishan to get an experience of a newsroom, I sent him. Why to did you. you send him to me? So exactly. Was, so did Lutian's <laughs> media not have enough places for no, Ishan to, to learn? Yeah, why I did you send him to me? So <laughs> I think uh, Ishan, I sent because when my reporters were coming back and when I asked them who was who are we being beaten by. like right? for a news agency i want to know which channel is beating ani when i know that my news is being beaten by somebody else then that means that that person deserves my respect or that channel deserves my respect mm. so you guys were beating us mm. nobody else was beating us at True. that stage True. right it's not the it's not the packaging or the way you're speaking it or the way you're presenting it that matters for me it was who's beating and mm. what is this model So when I said if there's somebody who's beating me I need to know that that is that is the kind of journalism that is going to be our next step yeah. forward. Yeah. So I thought that Ishan uh, will learn a lot and we will learn a lot. And yeah. I think we learned uh, yeah. uh, you know what you needed from a news agency what you were doing with your competitors and how you were beating. I think mm. phenomenally you changed because I saw other channels replicating what you were doing in times now. See, mm. we are sitting here and watching what all channels are doing, and I saw that happening with what you were doing. I don't know whether you were seeing that. No, I tell you, there's another dimension to it, and uh, having observed the way news is done in Delhi for about a decade, a little short of a decade, I realized that what was missing in the news was the heart. And I want to just explain this a little in detail to you. In in Delhi. news the way i saw it i'm talking late 90s early 2000s the was the quest of four or five things smita one political relevance political and bureaucratic relevance that was the high point that journalists and editors really worked for second some kind of patronage some kind of political and bureaucratic patronage that is something which journalists really sought and delighted in mm-hmm. <laughs> it is the be all and end all of your life you know third and i'll tell you disproportionate wealth corruption in media circles was rampant up to a point where it became embarrassing to watch people used to boast about it oh i've got this farm house here i've got this farm house there there's no known source of income uh every several people bureau chief um, upwards the designation was a pretense as was their salary so i saw deep rot corruption uh and no commitment to society and most importantly no commitment to the nation absolutely zero commitment to the country it became a form of individual aggrandizement and i saw it up close i'm not naming people but anybody watching this knows who i'm talking about and smita i despised it so I think it was necessary to give this media a reality check. 
and i think what i seriously gave them have given them and continue to give them and will give them in the future is a reality check of how the people in this country really think yeah. what media they want what media they deserve the form of media that will serve the people's interests the form of media that will serve the national interest and zero sense of self importance here when i'm saying it's me hmm. because i when you said and i told you that there was only in in my early phase at ndtv the only occasional stories where i saw impact but i saw the impact potential of the medium of the visual medium i'm not calling it television the visual medium to create impact and then i saw the colossal selfishness and waste of people who control the levers of that medium here in this city and so i felt that sitting 2000 kilometers away yeah, it moved. was time to give them a reality check and i i can tell you with absolute conviction today as i felt then that i was i have been closer to the hearts of the people then and now is there a reason that you deliberately moved from delhi to mumbai because all tv news channels were based in delhi in those days even now they are delhi noida no, I had whatever i moved to see times of india gave me a job in delhi and by the time we raised the investment from reuters i was in delhi my family well, sorry i was in mumbai they called me to mumbai so they said do you want to launch in mumbai i said why not i remember first going to kamla mills the day we got the investment check and we said we to build a building i remember going to kamla mills at that time and we went to the second floor of this building and said this is a big enough place 20000 let's build a studio that i saw the bricks being laid we constructed the studio from scratch so why was i in bombay bombay i still call it bombay, bombay. <laughs> why was i in bombay i just happened to be there and it was okay and i felt you can do it from here but we kept a center in shriram center but over a period of time i began to enjoy being in mumbai and I, enjoy the distance yeah. of it all you know this is my two cents i mean bit of an upstart between both you giants but i should say just it's been a decade also huh, since i was uh, with you taki long lage kal kal se aaya so also in that time we saw a lot of the channels the prime time and the bulletins before that were primarily your delhi beats and your hmm. metropolitan cities and all times now at that time under him was was the first channel that actually went with live assets to you know villages to towns and show what the real people are going through on a daily on a daily basis you know if a kid fell into a borewell a live feed of you know to make sure that the ndrf don't go there and rescue that kid it was them that started it and then we all ran towards it no it was so, also yeah. conviction you're totally yeah. right yeah uh ishan our our profession especially in india has lacked a sense of purpose and along with the sense of purpose comes with a sense of conviction see why i am why am i doing this job why am i a journalist why am i an editor what purpose do i serve is it going to be only for myself and my career progression to a certain extent yes all of us do that but i think that my true professional satisfaction came around the time the prince story happened yeah. around 2006 7 when i began to observe almost like a student that if you actually uh, use the impact of the medium you have a larger purpose and the larger purpose when you are convinced of your larger purpose in anything in life is then you do it with greater passion right you know and not that this can be taught in a school of journalism but if you see a small child's lives being saved and you see that the entire country's attention in that period went to those visuals and then you ask yourself in a ordinary news day the story of a child falling into a manhole would have been a small item a diary item a diary yeah. item mm. a 30 second wrap a page 3 single column 100 yeah. page buried at inside. the most yeah. buried inside and perhaps the child's life would not have been saved right and so then you know and, and also at at some time i saw overall awakening happen right before my eyes I'll tell you why. Because the first time you do the story, there are a lot of people who raise their eyebrows, say you're sensational, say that you're overhyping things, say this is tabloid journalism. But then, if it is so bad, then why is everybody following it? Yeah. Why is it that through an entire decade and more, and even now, the editorial agenda that we set is followed by others? If we are so bad, yeah. obviously, there is an awakening, awakening, and and that awakening was very opportune. Because let me ask you, Ishan mm. and Smita. around the time i was doing this i was doing prince we covered 2611 in a different yeah, way yeah, with yeah. greater passion we questioned the country's foreign policy and by the time we were doing the scams which is cwg scam around may june 
2010 right up to the prime minister's press conference in february 2011 approx that time till the devas isro scam and then the anna agitation and then nirbhaya 2012 this entire period was it exponential of 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 the return of news yes of the absolute and unquestioned return of news in the medium of television you know what purpose it served it was a reality check for all these hindi channels operating in delhi who by then had descended television into saap cd ludo nagin dance yes. virtual yes. videos yes. videos of people dying on camera yes. you know the kind of rubbish bhoot preet kal duniya khatam hone wali hai occult you know sansani right and all of these forms i despise hmm. i think this you see they say to me you are the one who is after ratings i am not after ratings ratings follow me because what we do is out of our conviction i am doing service to my country yeah now whether it be the coverage of monkey gate yeah. as a test series or cricket series in 2007 or 2611 or the corruption cases somewhere serious news came back we are the people who brought back news on television you run india's biggest news agency you know that how many channels at that point of time were yeah. running pure news no whatever i have done people may like or dislike what i have done i can confidently say that in my in my last 16 years as an editor of a channel channels network whatever i have done only news mm. you can disagree what i have done yeah. but i have not compromised on the news no it's the form you know? of yeah. news so that so what we did was we we yeah. actually smita brought a lot of conviction back we we we, we were doing things because we believed in it and we we when we do something you believe in you don't think of the consequences mm-hmm. you know you don't think of who's going to be upset who's going to be hurt which political party will like it or not like it who is suresh kalmadi close to who is suresh kalmadi fronting for what happens to a raja we don't think of the consequences you don't even think that when you're doing devas isro scam which by the way there was a arbitration case in the high courts yeah. two months back and the verdict after all these years proves me correct yeah and that was the it is scam at at what which point of time i'm sure dr manmohan singh realized he couldn't quote and quote handle us with his political managers we were to be fair and to be honest out of control you know yeah. and we did it taking those risks at a time when all these players in lutians media who now give me lectures in journalism one doing nothing but sort of being the most obsequious before the establishment at that point of time so we took those risks we did it with our conviction and i think the people of the country appreciated Taking I think risk, I think yeah. they did. I think yeah, they I, appreciate. Absolutely. It. Taking risk yeah. is something of course you've done several times over. <laughs> Too much of it. Too much of <laughs> it. And boss, many times I've yeah. been sitting you know <laughs> on thing why does he do this? Why? So many times I yeah. feel that yeah. mat kar yaar please you <laughs> know especially when you when that yeah. thing that whole Ek sawal pucho. Acha okay I I want to get to the part of uh, of what happened with the whole vaze parambir thing no, no, okay, before that before that i just want to ask one thing you're right about the conviction that you had i mean we all followed it no doubt about it. which conviction your conviction of your editorial, editorial of yeah. sort of stance yeah. and everything no doubt about it everyone did but kabhi kabhi sir aise lagta hai ki you know maybe on a certain story we go overboard sometimes did any story give you a doubt that you know maybe i said a little too much and i need to start backtracking or probably bring bring sort of bring it back on track that you've sort of ventured veered away from a story i'll give you a small example and what i'm talking about specifically this aryan khan story that happened all channels sort of had one similar line initially as they went on and as the aspects of the story started tumbling out tumbling out then we realized that listen there are, there's more to the story than that, than what has been you know put on record or what's come out in the investigations and then sort of people sort of figured out and toned their li- toned their sort of coverage more aligned to what the truth of the matter was so in just keep that using that example do you think that sometimes in a particular story you've gone overboard everybody has different views on the truth hmm. i have not been part of the herd so who knows what the truth is in any case so i would go by my conviction and uh, i'm not forcing anyone to follow what i believe in I won't go into details of that case. Sure. But I I don't sit on the fence Ishan in anything and I think A, it's not in my nature B it should not be in Indian journalism. 
obviously with facts at hand now as far as backtracking which you said earlier i have truly not backtracked on anything i have not backtracked on any story i do and i have found sometimes that in the moment if you backtrack you may regret it later sometimes the truth takes time ishan mm. i give you two examples i just told you about devas isro yes now it has taken all these years for a court verdict to come 12 years uh palghar yes okay at that time it was seen to be done and dusted in 2 months right and the entire media went with whatever the maharashtra government said why didn't they raise questions i didn't backtrack on palghar i didn't backtrack on on, on 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 devas isro um i wouldn't even backtrack on 2g hmm and these are stories i have done and sometimes it's a question of emphasis there are two ways of doing a story you want to do a story to give yourself enough leeway for an escape route later example being adarsh yes housing scam if a journalist wants to kill a story he can kill a story you can call it a housing scam and mm-hmm. that's a sure way to kill a story you name it, it. no no because if you call mm-hmm. it an environmental issue housing scam mm-hmm. and coverage in page 3 part of the environment page mm mm-hmm. you're killing the story i was the only person who called it cargill for profit i didn't break the story i rebranded the story deliberately and a lot of journalists were upset with me he's trying to take ownership for a story we broke and i tell them no, what what matter. impact did your coverage have for 6 months because you were covering it without conviction without passion you were making it a story of a building that has broken environmental rules mm. we made it a story of politicians using deceit and falsehood yeah and shooting of the shoulders of supposed allocations which were meant for families of cargo war widows not war getting widows, reduced yeah. and taking that money and that property in benami assets for yourself totally. so we have actually went to the nub of the matter yeah. nub of the matter yeah. and you can ask the then chief minister if you ever interview him hmm. you ask the then chief minister of uh, hmm. of maharashtra whether he called me and i told him i'm not backtracking you think ishan and your people know this who are watching this you think over the last 15 years of my life hundreds thousands of politicians have called me to backtrack now they've stopped calling because they're convinced that i'm a madman <laughs> now the point here is you want to share one conversation i will many <laughs> on and off record uh-huh. i said i'll write a book one day Sorry. but but the point is all you have to tell the politician is sir my obi van is outside i'll pull the camera you speak speak on camera speak yeah baat karo hmm? speak on camera but even the politician by the way he lost his job 2 days later right hmm. we have broken stories that have upset people yeah and we are not in the business of making people happy when i first did ipl you know so many people lost their job hmm. did i do it to make people lose their job no that was the accidental part there is no thought in it i went with my conviction there was something hanky panky with the kochi ipl i thought then it cost people their job it cost people their franchise we're not in a popularity race but since you use the word backtrack i'll tell you confidently from then to now i have never backtracked i've gone to jail and back but i have not backtracked sometime i am sure that in the fullness of time the truth will come out it did right with this whole thing in the fullness of time it does but what happens at that moment there are so many other yeah. influences if you want to be open to the influences then you'll think and maybe you will be forced to backtrack mm-hmm. i tell journalists and reporters don't do the story if you have to backtrack later go you by your conviction think you, it through in your mind when you did this whole thing i mean when that whole sachin vaze uh, episode happened i was on air with you with your team mm. when that team came in to pick you up and i seriously didn't think that they'd drag you to jail i i thought it's going to stop it's going to stop now now <laughs> and you know i mean yeah. your even your anchors were like no it's not stopping ma'am it's going to continue i said nahi nahi rok lenge i didn't believe when i saw those machine gun carrying guys coming and your family out there being pushed and shoved uh, I, it it was it was terrifying at least for for viewers and i had so many people calling me up and said are you watching it said, yes i'm watching mm. what's happening it was it was terrifying mm. and then they sent you uh <laughs> to jail what was that like or not that period i mean you didn't talk about it for quite some time you didn't you didn't say what what you went through Th- that those jails taloja jail and all is where terrorists are there mafia accused are in that jail 
what was it like for a journalist for and a and a army officer son you grew up in cantonments all that what no god like? no godfathers so it's a very yeah see that's a period of my life i have not spoken about in detail what you are asking i have spoken about the fact that we we were right what we have done is right there's no backtracking that will be proven correct in the court of law which we have been we've spoken about the legal side of it because the charges that were put against us were outrageous outrageous but before i come into what happened in jail let me ask you uh, today if the commissioner of police of delhi holds a press conference and says that everything in ani is the proceeds of crime and says that there is another news agency i was investigating i have completed the investigation in 4 hours against that agency that is a very good agency this is the bad agency i found out and we will confiscate the assets arrest smita prakash arrest the family lock up this premises these are the proceeds of crime and if on that day outside your house or your home all of the media in delhi were to come stand outside and accept the press con police commissioner's claim and paint you as a financial criminal how would you respond <laughs> and if it so happened and then my mind thinks so what you are asking me about the date of my arrest which 5th i think november. is the 5th of november 2020 yeah but what you must and and i would like to tell the viewers of your of your podcast they must look at the events that happened a month earlier uh in fact around the 8th of uh october 2020 exactly a month earlier parambir did a press conference in which he said that i was buying the viewership of people of this country by paying them 500 rupees each and everybody lapped it up everybody lapped it up you're the journalist dishan i'll ask you two questions mm. how is it that there were dozens of journalists and camera crew outside my house 2 hours before the press conference mm. they'd been tipped off of course uh, yeah. that's yeah. question that's question that's question number 1 yeah. how come the he that fellow that commissioner who now has so many cases against him he and the entire One. Uh, they did they did innumerable press con uh, 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 innumerable mm. uh, interviews on that day yeah right and the third question which i i want to raise before you is if a person works hard works hard as a journalist for over 20 years breaks out from very limited capital with intense hard work builds an organization and dreams of scale as in the clear dream was to build india's largest news organization which smita i want to tell you republic is destined to be the largest news organization in india and through hard work and if it so happens that as part of that growth story we launch a hindi book. news channel a hindi news channel which becomes number 1 mm. beats everybody hollow yeah. yeah through editorial coverage right i am obviously upsetting the apple cart of a lot of mm. media corporate players in lutians delhi who have had it too good for too long but however is this the way to fight me yeah is joining hands with politicians i have upset and policemen who have their own axe to grind the way to honestly battle a competitor in a media industry where entrepreneurship should be welcomed i don't like people who use unfair means to fight me i i very much welcome anybody who battles it out on the basis of stories coverage marketing distribution anything but that press conference by the way happened a day after we completed 8 weeks as india's leading network in both english and hindi which so in the Parambir which, was which in the which in the, the history process? no 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 From what there? i'm trying to say is that it by october 2020 republic had reached a unique position where no media organization in the history of india in print or television has been numero uno in both english and hindi hmm. since 1947 to now name one media organization in india yeah. who which has held numero uno position in terms of viewership audience share in english and hindi so obviously people saw it as, as a threat now i'm not suggesting a conspiracy what i'm saying is that maybe it was a fortuitous sense, turn of events for my enemies 
who thought that they would join hands together and this is the right moment you know the organization and the individual is doing too well let's beat him down using a combination of factors and i think that it is a it is a curse for the lutians media that they have chosen unfair means at a time when they should have sharpened their editorial objectives and their lesson for them forever should be do not use unfair means to get ahead today republic is even more powerful and stronger influential in terms of viewership we have a destiny in ahead of us what has all this led to so i wanted to bring you back from the arrest because see what happens meeta if i talk about my arrest what happened to me in jail what i went through i will talk about it i have no problems talking about it but i want people to understand the background that okay. in this country when someone from a middle class background aspires for greater dreams then the existing establishment which wants the status quo to continue sharpens their knives and can't fight me individually but they must not join hands with criminals either in uniform or in politics because then you are bringing the profession down mm -hmm. it is the biggest blot in the history of indian media smita i'm not telling us ordinary thing forever for the next 100 years i hope there will be nothing worse than what happened it is the biggest blot in the history of indian media that the media got together with politicians policemen murderers and convicts look at the people they join hands with now they can say we didn't contractually join hands but they opportunistically did join hands to bring me down and to bring republic down is it not a fact when i'm saying this today and those people watching it if they are watching it can they really look at me eye to eye and say no no we did not do it yeah the fact is they know we did it why did you do it why could you not work harder why could you not be have the pulse of the people with you why don't you believe in the future of this country like i do so these are questions anyway that part is over so what happened to me on in november 2020 is extraordinary because i'm asking you today who in the indian media which editor in chief has gone through what i went through but the moral of the story is if the idea was to crush me and to crush me in various ways by physically assaulting me and bringing 111 120 strong group of people 100 of them fully armed 26 27 of them inside my flat pushing me with the butt of their weapons hitting me in the crotch yeah, yeah. physically assaulting me thrashing me through the way right not even letting me wear my shoes right locking said, locking me up locking lift, he said chappal locking, se lock, locking me up in the loo of a jail doing things which are unbelievable we talk about human rights abuses i don't talk about it putting me shifting me from one jail to the other dragging me through my hair right unspeakable offenses making me open my wounded hand mm -hmm. with my with my own left hand to open my stitched hand which had eight stitches on it right and making me open my stitches in front of me which i have said you know doing things like that why what were they no, planning no. to and and then telling me why don't you chill out a little bit we'll chill out picking me up from my jail cell at 6 o'clock in the morning and taking me for court and court interrogation for 8 hours 10 hours what did what do you think this chill out means right, chill out is that uh, tone down your editorial tone down no tone down your you at that point in the jail or you no, no, or your editorial no, of your channel no no tone down hmm tone down in every way obviously what was this all about hmm. it was an attempt to make me tone down hmm. it was an attempt at getting me on a table to compromise hmm. and i can proudly say that i did not compromise i did not tone down i did not seek a rapprochement right i am convinced of what my work is what my ethics are what my values are i didn't tone down but again to cut the long story short and i'll answer your question But later when he came at, in at, you at, said that you are sachin vaze aren't you like no, no, no i knew said, i i yeah. see sachin vaze i the, 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 no? the, mm. the fact is yeah. that encounter special yeah. the fact is that uh, again not going back to the arrest but i am going back to what purpose all that served 
I am asking today, sitting in your office, what purpose did it serve? Yeah. What difference did it make? But what I am saying today, I'm sure to they you are is different. The is that question. is that is that in the history of independent India, which editor has gone through this? Which editor has mm. gone through this? And I know I was a spectacle for all a lot of people in the Lutians media, but I think they they had an opportunity to redeem themselves by raising their voice there. Not that I needed them to. Let me make it very clear. I can fight my own battles. I don't need them. But for themselves, they should have done it. Now, as far as the absolute incident which you are speaking about, which is the moment of the arrest, you have seen about it. You've seen it on television, I'm sure. But you've seen perhaps 1% of it. And when a person goes through in those circumstances, is uh, it's an experience. If you want me to detail the experience, I will. <laughs> yeah. But but it's a it's a different experience. But I would not say that it's a degrading experience. How can you say that your family was also involved? No, no, it's not a degrading experience. It's not a degrading experience because it depends on the way you uh, you go through the experience. I can tell you, Smita, I went through the experience with absolute dignity. I went through it with dignity and I don't think you can be degraded if you don't want to. But yes, you know, I have never been to jail before. I have never been shifted in jails before. I have never been treated like a terrorist before. I remember on the day when I was arrested, they created a green corridor from my house in Lower Parel down through to Alibag. And in the middle of traffic, the only thing that was going through in my mind was what nonsense. Why, why are they disrupting Mumbai traffic for me? They created a green corridor yeah. for, to, for the vans. And I, there were black, um, you know, black curtains on the back. I could see beyond that. They created a green corridor about 50, 60 kilometers so that I could be moved through, right? I could be moved through the traffic. And when I reached Alibag, when I reached Alibag, and I went to the police station, and when I came out, and they said that it's time for you to go to the, go to the court because you have to be produced there as a convict, uh, as an accused. I came out of the police station. And I saw that there were dozens of drones flying over the police station. The entire city, if you could, the town of Alibag had been cordoned off. And there were drones flying because they were capturing every moment of mine. So I want to know who was getting the CCTV footage of me. They were obviously providing live footage of me to their political masters. And I looked above and I saw the drones and there were crowds outside, hundreds of people outside. I, I remember I, I met Shamu, I met my wife. I asked for her to come and she came forth. But I was shocked that the at the level of preparation they had for my arrest. Hmm. Did you it's feel like they had caught Chota Shakil or Dawood yeah. Ibrahim yeah. and brought him in then. It was crazy. I was, I was in, you know, the funny thing is, at that point of time, I was looking at it as a reporter. <laughs> I, I, I put myself in. I yeah. said that now let me look at this as a reporter. That's a reflex there's, action. This, this is a reflex yeah. action. Yeah. There's, this, there's this great criminal being caught inside and oh, the way he's being protected, he's not being, nobody around. There were 30, 40 people around me all armed and ready to push me back if I moved a little bit. Did you fear for your life at that stage? Because, you know, everybody knows that some of them were encounter specialists out there. Did you fear that they, that you could be eliminated at that stage. See, when all of this stuff is happening, you're not thinking that far. You're not thinking that far. Um, I know that a lot of people were. Now, if I look back, there were so many things which happened, which, you know, it's good I didn't overthink at that moment. Because when you're in a, when you're in a jail cell and there are 60, 70 people in the cell with you and there are about... 1,200 very, 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 very hardened criminals sharing the place with you. And there are people from uh, from the D-gang right next to you and in your cell. And there are people who are, uh, you know, there are pedophiles and murderers and there are, uh, there are people who are deep into narcotics who are with you. And the, uh, there was, you know, the people I exposed for in narcotics were there in the cell next to me. And there were people who had a significant play in the Dawood gang who were made to meet me in jail. And I met them. And uh, when people from the underworld were sent to my cell, and I, I met them and I spoke to them. And, you know, at that moment, at that moment, when you're in that situation, you 
you don't really think because you're thinking of the next thing uh, you can't think i uh, when you stand in a phone line and there are 50 people ahead of you you get 2 minutes to speak to someone and i always used to call my lawyer you know uh, first thing and uh, you know and when i used to speak to my lawyer there were five policemen wanting to hear what i was saying mm. so but uh, so you know when you're going through so much you're not really thinking because you're in a cell you're in a big cell and there are several cells you're in one of the largest of them and there are too many people so the only thing that you're thinking about when you're being taken for the for the interrogation is when this is going to finish you know and there are moments when the interrogation is getting too tedious and these guys they are having a whale of a time they're eating in front of you they are talking in front of you they're gossiping and then they're going in and out and then they are going to the washroom and back and you you're simply going through three rounds of interrogation and it's never ending and it's really stupid uh, but you go through it and at some point of time you almost feel like what are these police people doing and it was seeming to me that they were constantly taking instructions and there were attempts made to try and break me you know you break him drag the interrogation make it personal hit them hard take him from one place wake him up at 4 o'clock in the morning hit him put him into one cell take him to another police station make him stand there at the entrance of the police station let him be unguarded all that stuff but get- but but the truth is mm-hmm. truth is i have i have always i i look at it far removed mm. i was not i i was looking at it from the other perspective what they are trying to do and it was apparent to me that it's a very predictable attempt to break me and those who are trying to do it don't know what stuff i am made of were you hit pardon me oh, of course of course i showed my wounds to the judge you see none of all this was ever reported i i i i i i i uh, i i asked for physical examination and i I told the lady judge out there I I I showed her I opened my shirt I I lifted my shirt and I showed my shoulders and I I was totally bruised through and through totally bruised through and through on the way to the police station out there I told the cop this is what I've been through I've been badly assaulted physically in the pretext of moving me from one van to the other I mean let me be I'm coming into the I am coming into the van with you there's no need to assault me the judge sent me for physical examination I was physically examined. The the doctor completely saw that mm. I was bruised but there was a lot of pressure I mm. believe on the on the medical on the doctors then and they said that I have uh, I have self inflicted injuries. Can you beat yourself uh, can you bruise yourself right uh, your down back. your spine yeah. at the you, back your, your hand part. won't reach. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's bizarre but that's what it is. Did Yet, you at that yeah. time regret uh, or not that maybe i shouldn't have maybe i can compromise and any point of time did you feel that nahi karta my journalism could have been a little less aggressive maybe or absolutely not never <laughs> if if you see if i did not compromise in 2011 when the entire congress government tried to put pressure on me when i was the editor of times now then why would i compromise now this was physical i have had cabinet ministers warn me personally of consequences I have written letters back to cabinet ministers describing my phone conversation with them. They have gone complaining to my bosses. This has been the story of my life. So I I really don't care about the consequences. Should the consequences go so far? I mean at one point of time when you're exposed to all kinds of people when you're in jail, you do think about what's going to happen at night and so I wouldn't sleep at night. I would just remain awake the whole night. So I remember in my jail cell I would lie next to the window. and there's a big cell and there were the bars and i would keep looking at the looking at the ceiling and anyway i couldn't sleep because because there were these uh, gigantic reptiles on the ceiling which was very high and i i mean not gigantic reptiles they, they were not lizards Lizard. but there's some some larger form of lizards <laughs> and different <laughs> colors they were on they were on the on the on the on the, That's so on the ceiling so i so I, i would anyway i would my adrenaline was running very high and did i did you would, have a mat or a bed or what was it that you had no, in I, the jail i had a, i had a i had a very very thin mat huh. that's it i had a thin mat and uh, so i would roll that up and i would then lie down at the end of the day because you are too fatigued you've come back from interrogation you don't know what's going on in the outside world and it's just endless it's going on and i thought that i had been they had denied police custody for me because the judge realized the first day that this wasn't much of a case so legally speaking the judge in the alibag j court denied police custody it's only accidental that the high court kept hearing we have kept going mm. up and down that it went on endlessly 
I'm sure the state government enjoyed it. But mm. I would, as I was saying, when I was come back from there at about twelve, one o'clock, and all, so everybody in the cell would be sleeping, and I would, I would then just look at this. I, I said I don't want to sleep because what if that falls on me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would, I would, I would sort of, I would not that I'm. I I would use these excuses to stay awake, so I don't think I slept for two three days actually. How many people were there in your cell? Initially, about twenty five thirty. Then there were more brought in. There were forty forty five fifty maybe fifty 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 five. Wow. Good experience. But okay. tying it back, coming back, let's go to the motive again. You said. But I must tell you that I was okay. Yeah, of course. I was okay inside inside the cell. I was okay. I shared my food, and. Uh, and i i must tell you that towards the end of my period in jail um i'm not a big fussy eater i wouldn't eat too much so they would give four rotis each or something so i would have one roti i would share the rest with the other so i became quite popular because whatever food i got i said let us all eat together i remember two days before my release mm. 30 of us i think in the cell we sat and we made a circle and we sat and had dinner and and i served them and they served me so i went and took my food i had some and everything else i gave them dessert or palleji biscuits <laughs> so i i was very popular because i was sharing my food i i didn't <laughs> i was constantly sort of moving around so it was fine i got to meet a lot of people i had and when finally you got bail what was that like they would uh, they would for the for the because i had such long hours of interrogation at that time that even the fellow inmates would feel bad for me because in this you know i mean at the, at the end of the day see, i am not a terrorist i am not a murderer i have not committed a capital offense there is nothing to interrogate me for so they would feel sorry for me because i would they would take me early in the morning and uh, they would bring me late at night mm-hmm. so when i would come back by about 8:30 or so i would go past each you know each cell and they would talk to me and then somebody would say we were praying for you and there was this man he was a sufi he was a sufi uh, religious person in one of the cells and they actually they were praying for me mm-hmm. so when the day of my when the day of my release uh you know i was there were people were people were clapping in the nearby cells because i would i would constantly bother them i would not let the guys sleep on the other side because i had no access to news on what was happening on my case so i would keep asking the person in the next cell wo oh, zara wo 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 jo tv hai there was a tv small tv about uh, Uh, four cells away and i couldn't hear or see hmm. so anybody who would pass that way i said please put republic bharat zara batao kya ho raha hai mere case mein so they after some time they would they would pass on the information oh, aapka hearing postpone ho gaya aapka kal hai acha nahi hone wala and they would do their own legal interpretation <laughs> of it aapka to ho gaya aap abhi 2 mahine rahoge 3 mahine rahoge whatever but we became friendly it we became friendly so everybody knew about it so the day i got i got bail it became sort of breaking news yeah and everybody put on republic so I, everybody was watching republic mm-hmm. bharat in taloja jail in that distant and thing and you, i got the breaking news from them when you yeah, came out and up that huge crowd <laughs> did you expect that crowd that there'd be so many people lining the streets when you got out of jail when that you know when you came out with that hand fist in the fist bump that you <laughs> and did you, and, and you can't blame the media because pretty much everyone was there ev- yeah selectively <laughs> <laughs> i'm not the popular person in the media but be that as it may i was getting late and uh, the the release order had been signed and we we got we got bail i was standing there uh was i was having a casual chat with the jailers then somebody said you should launch a marathi channel they were talking to me nicely <laughs> i said yeah i will so we were having a pleasant chat and it was shamo came i came out and then the the tone changed hmm. because just as i was about to leave the tone changed and i remember shamo said get into the car i saw her and she said get into the car and uh, so i sat and then the a cop or two wanted to sit in the car and so she said you can't sit in the car i'm taking him home and they said no we're going to sit in the car and they insisted actually on putting me in a police van and driving me to washi and then the cops one of the cops came and told me that there is a huge crowd outside which is waiting to lynch you because you have upset their political favorites and that mob is waiting to lynch you your security is at risk you will you will not come out safe your life is at risk we need to take you to washi bridge and then you can go from there whichever you want uh, so shamo insisted and we i sat in the car and i came out but the reason i was coming out was because uh because my car had been surrounded by the police and all armed and they were not letting me come out 
and i don't think i'm 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 so unpopular that or so hated in this country that people will want to kill me right outside a police station right so i came out and and i couldn't believe what i saw mm. i i i had written it out many times what i will say when i came out come out i had i used to have a small notebook and as to you know i used to sketch the jail cell and i used to sketch things and as to make notes so i remember stuff and i remember i would uh, i would distract myself by thinking of other things and about the television medium stuff and uh, about people i met the experiences i had and when i came out i would often talk about think about what i would say when i came out but when i came out the i was not being allowed to meet anyone i was not being allowed to meet my colleagues i was not being my people from my channel were outside no, there was a distance kept between me and them and they just wanted me out from sight it is as if, as if the uh, maharashtra government had said make sure that he doesn't get to talk to the people or talk to the media so the, i i had a sunroof so i stood up and what i saw smita i will never forget in my life ishan because i saw i saw on the other side of the road because they'd been pushed back and they were like the policemen were pushing the yeah. people back yeah. Yeah. and i saw hundreds thousands of people what they decided to do at that moment all of them maybe they thought in planning there was no way for them to communicate to me they switched on the the lights on their phones so all i saw when i came out was just as a a a, a sea of uh, spotlights spotlights on yeah. me and people were waving it yeah oh it was a very emotional moment for me i was of course very charged up because it had been a long time but when i saw that it was uh, the, you don't need to say anything in words and i remember from there because i was going to the hospital to get myself bandaged again because the blood was oozing and it had been bad i was worried about just getting septic or getting a bad infection because of my wounds open wounds in jail and so i i was going to the hospital but i couldn't literally drive because there were hundreds of people following me with their bikes and their cars and it was very heartwarming and i realized at that moment that we had won we had won at that very moment we did not need Uh, of course the law and everything will follow but in your heart in my heart i only live and we all should live only for public what the public things and the attempt was then to crush us and i knew that when i came out we had won and that was important for me it was it was important for all of us even now uh, or no uh, these days when people are watching your channel and watching the other channels i mean you've talked about how your competitors got together with the maharashtra government to put you down and things it's my it's my assumption assumption and we're watching as viewers everybody's watching this and it makes it makes people feel a little bit uneasy that competition between channels has got to this dirt level where there are personal yeah. attacks on each other and uh, you know viewers would like to think ha ye log compete kar rahe hain but it's it's become it's become very vicious isn't I, it i yeah i mean yeah you know smita i am not competing i'm just mm. doing my job they are competing i am not competing i'm just doing my job i'm doing it well and i'm not in a rat race with them they are competing my livelihood is not at stake their livelihoods are at stake they look at me as a commercial threat i am just doing my editorial job i sleep well at night i feel i am independent i don't owe anyone anything i'm not doing anything bad i truly believe in the future of this country i truly want to do something that makes a difference to the country that's all i want to do they are all fighting me they should not do that and as far as what you said the 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 demise of any ethics in this profession some things are not necessary you know surrounding where i live with cameras chasing me i was living in a i was i was living in a in a in a private house in in delhi for a few days surrounding my house with cameras uh you know uh, following my car this is I, after you came I, out oh, after jail. i came out after i came out when i was when my case was going on in court and and surrounding my house with cameras then doing shows on me uh you know uh, calling me names it was endless <laughs> it was uh, because i think i think what happened was they realized that i had won but they were giving it one more shot but boss aap bhi to compete kar rahe ho you, i mean i have to interject here because see i you also say republic is number one number one big banners on your channel your channel also sometimes tweets out and calls out those editors as well 
कंपटीशन तो है नॉट चैनल ही टेक अर्नब हिमसेल्फ आई एम नॉट ऑन ट्विटर योर चैनल इज ना दैट्स व्हाई सेड योर चैनल टेक्स नेम्स कॉल्स देम आउट बाय नेम दैट वी आर नंबर 1 नॉट यू you know so to say that you're not competing you are as well competing you are also there very much so in the in the ratings no i'm reminding people hmm. we don't troll people on social media but if anybody wants to give lectures we remind them hmm. you know the thing <laughs> thing is that if you did a show on me calling me names two years back then have the spine or the courage to do a show when you are named hmm. i'm not even i'm not even being indirect i'm not even being indirect or subtle about it i am saying that if yeah. there is a channel which is now the subject of an investigation by the agency which was making claims against me why don't you do a show on the charges against you i am asking a question and by the way i am asking the question very politely not in their tone not in their nature i am not putting my cameras outside their houses but i am reminding them and i am only reminding them so they realize their fault we are far beyond all this but it is necessary to remind them it is necessary for people to remember the episode of what has ever happened to republic between 2000 and 2022 i don't do it constantly acha as far as competing is concerned of course we are competing but we are not competing unethically right unethically unethically to we are not competing. but i want to go back to ascribing motive theek hai aapne bola tha na this lutians media ganged up with all these people powerful people it is my feeling it is your az- assumption it or your feeling it is my assumption it is no i i am saying that i believe and let me rephrase this hmm. what i have said that if you look at the combination of circumstances a number of people felt it was a f- god given opportunity hmm. to get us yes. down hmm. that's it i'm not saying they entered into a criminal conspiracy hmm. but i'm saying that it was an opportunity for them uh, or no i'm you know just to move away from this uh, i'll come back to this whole godi media versus khan market gang and all which several programs we've done on this on your show when you do this about foreign media and all but uh, before that i want to come to this you know you were mentioning 2611 for many people that was like a watershed moment on how terrorism nationalism all this should be covered by uh news media you know kargil was one episode mm. on how it was mm. like that was a watershed moment for some for people beyond before us it was uh you know uh, the 71 war and then for many after that because they hadn't seen war post kargil it was that this that whole moment of what happened uh, how bombay was covered 2611 was covered and to to a large extent what you did at that time i mean you wore nationalism you wear it on your shoulder collar uh, everything t bone no no cap, I, don't, i don't i don't your nationalism is uh, come on no i Arnav, don't i don't you are very very in there you no, I, you I, you're I, very no, bharatiya I, I, no no i i i i think i i wouldn't have done it hmm. had i not feel the urgent need to do it hmm. i feel i i feel this is my own perspective that there are lot of people who are working against the country's interests and what you are calling wearing nationalism on your sleeve is the only only way to put them down okay. you can't given the nature of the threats this country faces and we get a very close grasshoppers view of it in the media given the number of people who are willing to sell this country given the p- number of people who are willing to be fake present one thing and do another given the number of people who are not talking about why there were protests against the kodampolam nuclear power plant i'm not a i'm not a fan of nuclear power but the fact of the matter is i believe there were corporate foreign powers who were engineering it and given the fact that it's very easy in this country to give two people fake fellowships and three people uh, uh, fake foreign assignments and give three people sponsored tours abroad to get them to turn quote unquote activist uh, to create ngos and then work against the country's development interests these are one of the many facets of it So I feel that since there are so many people who are working as in my country's internal security interests, therefore it is necessary for a media house to strongly oppose them. Now these guys say you're wearing nationalism on your sleeve, but it is my purpose. Mm. Putting the news out first is not my only purpose. I can't constantly try and tell you I put the news out first. I'm subset this. I, I would rather say that I put nation first. somebody else may have their own motto or purpose for being in 
you know but but if i feel that uh, my work as a journalist or whatever i have done has to have a larger purpose i believe in it it's not a slogan for me it's a thing it's not a slogan for me it's not a marketing tool it is what i live for and then there are many who th- say that because uh, nationalism is so important to you uh, you are very quick to label people anti national without going into the and you, these are seasoned politicians who have cultivated their image they, they have their politics <laughs> and chatak say you turn around and say ki tum anti national ho which seasoned politician are you talking about you What's know i am not going to name which, me you know na <laughs> Which which okay. seasoned so, seasoned politician are you talking about? So from Farooq Abdullah to Mehbooba Mufti to everybody, you say, "Acha, tumara ye." And it could be just a one aspect of it. Of course, even the Huriyat, you know, you you did that whole Benakab thing of the Huriyat much before everybody else. We've all seen it, right? How the Huriyat was fated in Delhi, but nobody would say it. Why wouldn't they say? It? Yeah, exactly. No, but I'm asking. Why wouldn't yeah. they say? JKL. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. they say? JKL. JKL. Why wouldn't yeah. they say? Yeah. Why wouldn't they say it? Yeah. I'm asking you. Why wasn't wouldn't they say? It? Yeah. So this is. So exactly. this is my question. Why wouldn't they say it? Hmm. I I have only asked the contrary question. Why wouldn't they say it, Smita? Hmm. Why wouldn't they acknowledge that? Would do they did they not know? do people not know do we trust people for years in delhi it was said the huria takes money from both sides i'll be very direct about it you know smita yeah. i'll be they, oh these are people who are you know on the payrolls of pakistan and india both first of all there is no proof of anything but the fact is how could you trust them essentially was saying that there was some form of political mercenaries but nobody said it why are we fearful of bad people for me the questions are very simple in life there are good people and bad people smita bad people must be fought good people must be supported my journalism is very simple smita there is no complexity to this you know they are bad people bad people must be questioned it's a very <laughs> i understand it's as it's as simple as that and it's and very, coming yeah. from my, you know and 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 this is what the purpose of journalism should be and it's your containment uh, upbringing i'm convinced of this that you you're like there is no compromise with nationalism i th- i think i've seen that with anybody with a slight bit of uh, army background or whatever services background is that uh, you know how can you even think that it is it, you can gloss over these things in life Yes, to a great extent, army background. Seeing my father in uniform, seeing a lot of people in my family serve the country, being brought up with values. But it is also values. It is also values, and uh, uh, it's it's my entire family, my mother, my father, my family, uh, my uh, my upbringing. Uh, you know, but. Smita, why are these things so complex to understand? Mm. It you know why? Because we all enter this profession as idealists. At least I would say sixty percent of us. Yeah. And the ninety percent of people lose their idealism. And I am fortunate to be surrounded by people who remind me of idealism, purpose on a daily basis. And therefore, I have I I disagree with people openly. and i look at the clearest and simplest way to define them and sometimes that is by coining phrases like the tukre tukde gaye i am so proud to be the author of that phrase <laughs> yeah. and there is it is it is it was a, kind I, of shocking first i said you know when you used but, but it today, i was like i will not respond to this i i'm not going to <laughs> re- i was really annoyed with you and now when i, I like, feel i matlab? feel i feel i feel if there was There was oh, nothing. Oh, this urban naksar. No, but when I heard when I heard the video and this is Bharat Tere Tukre Honge. Yeah. What do you call them? Do you call them the Tukre Tukre Club? No. no. <laughs> Gang is a phrase, is an epithet which they deserve. Yeah. And yeah. and and somewhere, consider this, Smita, that the more direct we are, the more sense we make. You were the first one, I think, also who would do complete shows on Khan Market Gang, on Lutyens Gang, and the other side would do this on Godi Media, and you know, and these are former colleagues of yours. I've heard Ravish and the others saying that you know we got trained by the same person who came from uh, from London. He came and trained us and in journalism, and he taught us. <laughs> Somebody from London came and, and taught. <laughs> What and a joke! And he says that. Uh, so then uh, this uh, uh, blogger <laughs> asked him that, "आपको आपने कुछ सीखा?" And he said, "हाँ, मैंने बहुत कुछ सीखा." But then what is the point? क्योंकि 
उस ट्रेनिंग में ऑर्नब भी शामिल था और ऑर्नब ने देखो क्या कर दिया तो क्या फ़ायदा हुआ इस ट्रेनिंग का ना हियर इज़ अ पर्सन हु हैज़ who who probably is in you know same batch as us or whatever you know when we were doing journalism has gone so far away that will openly say that your brand of journalism is not journalism completely not so journalism I'm, I'm, you may turn around and say that that is not no uh, i'm not turning yeah. around and saying anything i'm saying that if there are people in this country who are making a living by calling me names good luck to them <laughs> I truly believe that there is a whole lot of people. I'm not naming names for these worthies we are mentioning, but there are people who are making a living even today by calling me names. So good luck to them. I don't need to give it much importance. That's all. Good for them. Good for them. Doesn't they, it? But does it rest easy or what dress? Does it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't trouble you that. Uh, you know these are people from who you worked with for so many years and Come you know on, no <laughs> absolutely i please understand we are all on our journeys yeah i'm on an exciting journey and, and can i tell you what my exciting journey is i am in a fortunate position to still have a few years and i hope a few decades ahead of me where i can contribute to my form of journalism which will serve the country's interest so i am very excited and i am positive and i am seeing someone younger than me like ishan and i am seeing okay i am seeing some energy in this guy right yeah. i am seeing you you are doing a new show you are reinventing yourself i am seeing people who are doing new things and i truly believe like you asked me about my entire jail experience there could have been a person who's been through one tenth of what i have been would come out like a very bitter person <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but, yeah. but i i would only advise these people who call others names don't be so bitter cynicism didn't creep in i mm, i yeah. i i want yeah. people to experience the joy of doing something purposeful with journalism right mm. by calling each other names calling this modi media godi media this that etc you know you'll become like a broken record very soon you think about it i am today thinking right now after i finish this show i've done three calls with my three channels I've had an extended discussion with my digital team. We are bringing out a new product. I'm understanding technology. Yes. I'm going to use technology to reach the people of this country. I'm 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 so happy when I, I go to my newsroom. And I don't want I don't want the future of Indian media or future journalists who are wanting to be journalists to keep listening to these bitter people. Yeah. And also bitterness so reflects so bitter bitterness foreign media. Bit I want to get to foreign media. Before bitterness, you bitterness bitterness mm -hmm. is generally an emotion I don't like. and what about uh, the future so, television journalist if if he or she is entering this profession what's your advice to them like see, they used to call me uh -huh. to journalism school session uh -huh. earlier they stopped calling me because <laughs> every every journalism school i went to i would go and say please don't do a course in journalism hmm and they never called me again okay? yeah because but the uh, reason but why i say this question my is question is because see in the end a channel's sort of entire news coverage boils down to the 9 pm debate these days 9 pm debates unfortunately take a very you know binaries there there's no in between over there it's completely polarized what the the topics that they choose in that sense is it do they lose out on actually covering the news or they essentially parroting one channel's agenda and they'll go for I, that only so actually uh see i like what i do so this debate is something i have done the 9 pm debate i have done because this is what i do and i think on a comparative sense unless i go back on the field start reporting or enjoying being a reporter again which i hope at some point of time i will do or do journalism in the more field sense um i enjoy what i do but my advice to both my other colleagues in the media and to uh, future journalists is you don't have to do the same thing hmm. i see no reason why other channels are compelled to do a debate because there must be there must be other forms of journalism you know uh, i was just talking to someone on the flight as i came and i said you know there need to be long form there need to be stories there need to be other forms of presenting the news and i'm sure there'll be variety of news you can follow and uh, and if i could i would do it myself and in fact i want to experiment with new forms of journalism so i think my advice to budding journalists would be this profession is going to explode in the next 10 years you know and you must experiment with everything mm -hmm. do what you enjoy there is no 
set formula of what you need to do you know there is no set formula of what you need to do yeah but but whatever you do if you feel that it can help your country it will give you a larger purpose you will have a longer and more satisfying career if you do that and then you will not look at yourself as a cog in the wheel mm. because see there is a mechanics of journalism you run an organization there are people who will log tapes there are people who will edit yeah but at the end of the day there is something that must bind them together which is greater than even your organization itself right you know so that's what i look at do you think that there uh, i mean the past few years there's been a certain credibility crisis in the television news business which is not there in say the print media and all because they have the i mean they write it down written word doesn't sh- sh- sort of is not as rough edged as it's television media it's not as emotive also. exactly yeah yeah complete nonsense hmm. <laughs> no no well, I, i'll tell you why okay please no. my, i i said print is dead and i was almost thrown out of an industry conclave but i said it i said it Three years back, when people called me for an industry conclave, I didn't realize that the sponsors of the conclave were newspaper houses. And then the event organizers told me, and I went on stage and I said that there's going to be a black swan event. And when the black swan event happens, your existing empires that you've built on print will not be able to survive because they're just too overloaded. And I said, I don't feel people will read the newspaper in the way they do it now. and covid happened and covid yeah. was that black swan event yes and i true but i said this yes. i said this in you I, i'll send you the copy of that i i said this and uh, people thought i was hallucinating mm. when i said that but the fact is that i had said something which uh, which was quite relevant so my answer to the question on print is print had a chance to reinvent 10 years back in india mm. they refused to there is not one big story of national significance hmm that print is breaking that print has broken which the whole country has followed yeah isn't that tragic yeah that's true uh, people call me names but i'll tell you by people mm. i can i can name a thousand stories i have done or, memory, or exclusive yeah. stories i have done or coverage i have done whether it be mm. ipl lalit gate cwg which have set the news agenda but print has not set the news agenda yeah and i think it may have it may be a bit too late for print to catch the also bus. i think mm. more of uh, but no disrespect there are a lot yeah. of great journalists in print i started out in print myself it's just the reality that that i think that print should have recalibrated its journalism mm. somewhere around the time that we were redefining the rules of the business in 2007 and 8 when we brought in a lot of heart and feeling and emotion and uh, and uh, sense of national pride into our coverage in the later years of the 2000s the early decade of 2010 print had an opportunity to then compete by setting the news agenda on its own but it did not i have a bit in of a different i in, 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 in the western uh, world already print is a thing of the past yeah. right it's all digital that they are accessing right. news mm. mostly no, i i have a differing okay. opinion i think now we also see a lot of television journalists who are sort of part of print newsrooms as well yeah. and they are sort of reimagining what a print traditional print product has to be you have we have we have newspapers who which have fantastic youtube following they have fantastic they, social media sort of they've embraced it and mm. they're doing a, a sort of mixed medium now so mm. to silo it completely into print or no i e- actually i don't believe in print television huh. and yeah. this, i mixed. look at it as as video and text Correct. yeah they're morphing actually yeah, yeah. and know, in yeah. the future there'll be video and there'll be text and there'll be streaming and there'll be video on demand and then there'll be text so uh, and yeah. the text will appear in various forms so in the future our own imagination for republic in the future will will have a lot of these forms so please don't misunderstand i love the written word i read a lot myself not as much as i would want to but when i'm saying print i'm talking about the news uh, publishing business in our country which should have redefined itself and its goals and objectives and shaken itself out of its state of inertia about a decade back when we're talking about boundaries let's now talk about geographical boundaries you you know many of your tv debates where you uh, speak about uh, foreign media having agenda when it comes to india you know doing agenda journalism uh, in it and you've often said that indian journalists or indian journalism has to rise up to this challenge and we have to have a global voice uh, do you still believe that uh, you know uh, we haven't india hasn't managed to have that you know like a cnn or a bbc or internationally or even an al jazeera for that matter we've not managed to have that as yet well as yet we don't have hmm. as yet we don't have it 
um, we've been insular. We've yeah. been we've been insular, and 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 private news organizations have not uh, crossed the Rubicon. You know, there's always that moment of indecision on whether you're going to cross the Rubicon. You know, historically, when you take this metaphor from Roman times, it's all about that moment of decisiveness, whether you realize that you want to get out of the comfort zone in which you are and then move into an uncertain territory. Mm. But you need to cross the Rubicon. And I said it, I had been invited to Moscow 2015 and I was on this sort of what they call a global panel and I found myself as an odd exception and there were... I, 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 there were a few sniggers initially when I said that, you know, the next global news revolution will come from India. But I, I, I supported it statistically by giving examples of the number of newspapers in India and then proving my case that we are the most, we, we are the least insular society and America is the most insular society and the most insular society has the greatest presence in global media. But that was 2015. In 2022, Given what CNN has done for itself, I wouldn't say that about American media. Sure. And I wouldn't say that about about uh, about uh, the United Kingdom also. And and I do know that the BBC will not be able to survive the day uh, British taxpayers don't give money as part of their forced license fees. These are hugely subsidized organizations. Yeah. Hugely subsidized organizations. And I'm committed to it. I have said it. And, and we are about a year away from doing it. We are going to set up in Republic the first global news organization. I don't know how I'll do it. I don't know how I'll fund it. I don't know well, to what extent it will be effective. But that's how I've built every part and of our And that's network. how you always move. That I'm going to do this. Yeah, and then we'll see the rest later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see the rest later. Yeah. And that's been, that's, see, I, when you're convinced about something, then it happens. It falls through. When we started our Hindi channel... We started it with insignificant amount, amounts of Hindi money. Hindi wasn't even your language. Hindi isn't my language. We insignificant amounts of money, mm. uh, massive in, uh, commitments out there. If the Hindi channel would not have worked, then Republic would not have survived. Similarly with Bangla. But some, somewhere I believe the people are behind us. They carry on, carry on. You mm. know, you do it well. But I also believe it's not just a carry on moment. It is the fact that demographically we, we need to have a foothold. We need to have a foothold for a say. And now about this balancing question which you've asked about coverage and all that. You know, I've, I've spent a lot of time in the United Kingdom as a student. Uh, first at Oxford, then as a fellow at Cambridge. I've travelled down there, a lot of friends there. Can you imagine the disproportionate clout that the United Kingdom gets because of the BBC? Oh, oh yes. It's disproportionate to its economy, to everything. And I think we need to think about that as a country. So I always look at larger projects which will serve a larger national goal. And I think this could be it. This could be it, you know. And, and, and when we started out with Reuters, in, in Times Now, I had this newsroom full of people. I don't know, it was where in your time. Yeah. We had we had the newsroom full of Americans and British and Chinese and it you was wonderful. You should do a world bulletin. Yeah, yeah. People were even yeah. abusing each other in mm. Hindi. Mm. In the newsroom. And it was quite wonderful. So I realized that news is this ever-flowing thing. You know? Yeah. Ever flowing, but thing. your your ambitions and everything that you want to do centers around uh, just journalism, isn't it? You wouldn't want to do anything beyond journalism. Never, <laughs> of course not. No Rajya Sabha seat. Oh, crazy! <laughs> <laughs> crazy or what? No, Why actually, would, you, 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 your mind, you, you be asked better. me that no, no, question. Wait. You'll Isha. be better with the Lok Sabha seat. Forget Rajya Sabha. Let me tell you. Let me tell <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, let me tell Why you. not public <laughs> service, Arna? Uh, please don't put that question. I'll tell you one thing. I, I, there at the at the height of the scams. There was this minister who said, let's have lunch. Okay. And he chased me. So I said, we have lunch. And over the lunch, after some time, he asked this question as we were heading to dessert. And I was not coming to the point. He said, what about public service? Mm. You know, a person like you should serve the country. I said, I'm paying the bill and leaving. <laughs> it's a, it, come on. I mean, this, yeah. we are, I'm, I'm terribly happy with what I do. Mm. I'm terribly happy about what I do. I, I'm, I'm terribly excited about the next day and I think this is, if I can do this for the rest of my life, it'll be a very fulfilling, so I can't, be a very fulfilling career. I, I, think I can't so, yeah. in life. Can I you imagine me yeah. as a politician? <laughs> no, no, I can't. I'd be a, I'd be a pain yeah. for everyone. Yeah. I would be difficult to handle. I can imagine you, I can imagine <laughs> you as a politician but not with, within a political party. <laughs> I don't think anybody can control you in, yeah, the, in a political please, party. I, I, I just love what I do and I think that natural career progression mm. that in yeah. Lutians, you know, people like to have ab, you know abhi now i need to be in the rajya sabha but there are uh, enough yeah. worthy people to be in the rajya sabha no yeah. disrespect 
why do I why do I need to be that I'm very happy where I am okay uh, I, and and by the way I I mean the media is going to go through such a dramatic series of events and where can you serve your country best is what I ask I've already got an opportunity I'm so lucky mm. you know I'm maybe one among a ten thousand or a million who is in this position today to play a role and. of late when we recruit young journalists when they come into our newsroom it's such a joy to meet a 22 year old who's come in and then they ask you questions and i think i have the next 10 years 20 years to guide people do new stuff so but or no i'm happy we, bef before i even try no to conclude did you did you no plan offense, that question no, 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 it was completely no. organic as organic. they say organic no, completely <laughs> organic so where, you, I, where you learn these words these are from, these are sort of keywords in the digital world na hamara organic growth hai or the everybody wants to know that when you do these <laughs> debates <laughs> it's so high octane so I really high like energy is this i look at him as my pro Yes, of course. <laughs> so this I take pride in him. High energy right. debate. Right. You know when right. Santoshi calls me up or when your team calls me up and say that 10 baje wala debate or Nub ke saath aa jaiye and you know Arnab sir is asking for you and all that. I was like, I can't do this 10 10 p.m. debate. I can't sleep at night. <laughs> How do you sleep at night after that high energy debate, oh Arnab? God. So everybody screaming over each other. You're also screaming and then they they come on your show and they abuse you on the your show and yes. you don't get ruffled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they Why? love doing it. Oh, I know. I've, of late, I've been taking everything with a yeah. lot of humor. You're smiling. You're you're I'm, you're taking. Yeah, it. you're cracking above the time. On yeah, my I show. know. I <laughs> like. <laughs> Why is he shouting back at them? They're saying all kinds of things. How do you sleep? What do you? Is, it doesn't. Uh, it's the only time in the day I really let my head down. Everything is done. I look forward to about seven thirty eight. It's like the time of the day when you know. everything is done you know administrative yeah financial hr organizational legal. meetings and yeah oh now God, legal 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 more legal more, legal. more fir more yeah, case yeah. the state governments never tire of filing firs against us and me so 7:30 is a time when you feel like okay now my time is coming it's my me time hmm it's my me time and and I feel very happy. I mean, there are days when I felt stressed before going in, but at the end of eleven o'clock, I feel very happy. So I I really enjoy it. Or no, there another question which uh, many viewers, listeners have is that journalists are often very close to politicians. You know, the proximity, and uh, then journalists start getting this aura about them that mm. hum bhi important hain, and then people start believing that oh, these guys can get things done. <laughs> That's that why I moved to Bombay. to be away from the politics yeah. at least i don't what's your question yeah. so that's what i want to ask you is that is it is it true does one get this larger than life ego that you know i can't even get everything done in republic <laughs> i have to get 10 permissions from all our senior colleagues to get things done so no it doesn't apply to me a, and he's right i've been sitting in mumbai for for the last uh, 17 years yeah. so i'm okay and I mean, I don't know. Yeah, maybe these are. This is the kind of stuff that I used to hear when I was here. Hmm. But I think the country has changed. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy, and I feel this country is going through a liberating experience where that kind of stuff, where media persons could open doors, does not happen in Delhi now. And I think that's a lot of discomfort that peep some old-fashioned journalists have with this present government that you can't open doors. Yeah, it's not important to be seen anymore. Neither, and, and I think it's good. Yeah. it's not disdain hmm. sometimes some journalists see this as oh the government has disdain for us i think there needs to be what would i call it church state divide or equivalent of that there needs to be a little distance hmm. right and the proximity is not necessary that kind of proximity proximity is not necessary you are reporting the news why, why do you need to be carried around in a government plane why do you need bottles of champagne to be pulled out and then you're asking questions on who is going to fund the losses of kingfisher and the prime minister is saying we have a responsibility towards mr vijay malia's airline while you are sipping tax payer paid champagne having a ball asking a prime minister why he is not funding kingfisher and then coming and writing articles about it not once asking about whether this is state sponsored corruption mm. so you know i'm give just giving one example that one question to manmohan singh that was asked hmm. you should go back in the ni archives and see his answer yeah i was and i pinched fight, myself yeah. that how is a prime minister promising committed taxpayer revenues hmm. 
hmm. to save a struggling airline yeah right yeah. and an airline that was had proximity at that point of time vijay malaya was very close to of the course. congress establishment so what did that proximity serve the people of this country i ask a counter question way before we came and we changed the narrative over the last 10 years because for 60 years before us before i was an editor this proximity that journalists and editors and media organizations had with governments what good did it do to the people of this country it got them nothing it is the greatest disservice in the name of proximity now the same people who were used to that level of proximity are now complaining that the government is not giving us access is it the government's job to give access to journalists when necessary yes if you if you are if you are unveiling a light combat helicopter yes but why on a daily day to day basis do you need proximity to ministry of commerce ministry of finance mm. ministry of corporate affairs ministry of railways defense i ask you smita i was horrified the beat reporters would only be there to get jobs done to a point to which ishan yeah. i'm telling you and you should share this with i thought i'll quit the profession the levels of proximity i saw proximity at all levels proximity to a joint secretary proximity to a minister proximity to a prime minister it was something to actually in the in the 2000s it was something to be proud of hmm not be ashamed about not Iske to do by connections hain iske connections it was so disgraceful so rotten so hmm. rotten so rotten please don't remind me about it but i feel answer to the question is i think this great right now the journalists are being told you do your job you fund your bills you find the hotel to stay in in new york if you want to if you want to sip the champagne you do you pay for your flight ticket it's very good so i think this distance is very good very very good what does arnab do to let off steam you said it is your debate <laughs> but you know everybody has something or the other music cricket something sports gym what do you do i walk i walk a lot and and uh, music all the time hmm all the time the only time i'm listening to music is when i'm on the move what music do you listen to? i listen to everything except gazals everything <laughs> <laughs> gazals are sort of make me very if it slow me down a lot and so i listen to everything i listen to soft rock i listen yeah. to uh, i listen to sufi i listen to uh, everything yeah. my generation present generation every generation 50s the whole jazz anything that gives you Uh, that gives you that sense of balance that one needs i you know the reason i'm asking is i remember that one incident when this um stand up artist came and harassed you on the uh, on the flight mm. and you just did not react huh. you just sat and i was like yaar ek machhar bhi aayega to you will swat it anybody mm. will swat it and you just sat there without reacting at all mm. how did you get that equanimity because i was watching a very interesting film called two popes That was a lovely movie. I, I, I had, yeah. I had, and, and uh, I, I, who the actors there in that film? Um, now I'm forgetting it too, yeah, but so, so, absolutely, I know. So I had never watched a film in which two performers hold the film throughout, and I never get the time hmm. to watch a film. And if you're very honest, very often people want to interact with me on the flight. So the first thing I do is put on my headphones and I watch a film. Hmm. It also allows me to introspect. So I had just begun watching a film, and. Uh, I don't I don't recognize the individual you are speaking about. I thought there was a condition the individual had and and I felt that it is not my job it is the job of the security people there to do it and I felt that thought he was shouting at someone else. And and truly to be very honest with you I had my headphones on. I like to watch at like if there's a scale of 0 to 100 I watch it about 90 so my volumes are high. I cut off yeah. and I watch the film. I did not realize much about this whole episode till I actually landed. because i was on my way i think to interview i uh, to interview yogi for mm. something so i was more focused by the time i reached my hotel i wanted my notes on the interview and through the flight i was watching the film it's only when my reporters told me there was some social media traffic on it and <laughs> that's the fact ye interview uh, ka apne interview ke baad bola it just struck me i have to ask you on this what really put you well we were always on the map but really like solidified it and the other person's political career plummeted was your rahul gandhi interview 2014 thoda batao kya hua tha what did you what went Should through your head when you were interviewing him and when you were getting head. The, your head i want to know what you went through what i went through yes i'll tell you after <laughs> but I'll, i i mean the thing is that see sometimes things drag no yeah yeah so i i felt it was dragging 
because uh, because uh, women empowerment it no. was repetitive and, and it's not easy as well pardon me it yeah. wasn't easy for you i mean i'm just what? talking as a journalist what was not easy to do you that to to keep do probing the yeah probing them uh, probing the man for an answer and repeating your questions in different iterations i sort of assessed him well in the green room before that mm-hmm. because he had he had come up very excitedly uh, walking up with me up the staircase telling me about my wikipedia background and i realized that he was doing research on me and wanted to impress me about how much he knew about me and in the green room then he told me asked me how old i was and i said i'm so i'm, I'm this is my age he said oh you're much younger than me and uh, i said yes but i have 19 years of work experience <laughs> and and I, i i told him because you know uh, he didn't get it he just staring at you I, he didn't get what i was trying to tell him and then in the interview also i don't think he got it and and i i felt uh, i mean you have seen the interview now yeah uh, I, i think he blanked out after some time and the other thing is that you shouldn't try to impress i'm not impressed by any interview i anyway you know smita when i do interviews there is one thing i tell myself that if this is my last conversation with the person so be it mm. i never do an interview in the expectation of a second one yeah. you know and that is what i feel you said what should you tell journalism students i tell them this let this be the last one but let me not embarrass my profession by doing it in a way that i would not like the postscript of the interview to be read so i think it was a very simple conversation which uh, he could not handle appropriately mm. appropriately and i feel that he and his party should not take it personally after all we are children of merit we are people of educated ourselves we are worthy citizens of this country we know i'm not here to give someone a walk over hmm they bl- they uh, boycotted your channel and one or two other channels and they they don't come on your debates and yeah. it continues they they said that because it's it's very personal your attack on them oh, rubbish i think that i think there are many people in these parties who want to ingratiate themselves to their bosses by trying to pretend that they are going to be the uh, you know the people who will save them from the attack of ornob and republic and these self appointed custodians in these parties are the biggest enemies of these parties and they present the things like that yeah and let me tell you this people aren't quite missing them on tv it's fine mm. <laughs> people aren't writing to us to ask them to come yeah so uh, it's okay we don't miss them and and we don't have this uh, you see smita how, we don't have anything to gain or lose by a political party coming i have at one point of time been boycotted by all parties <laughs> when i did the story on 21 parliamentary secretaries being appointed wrongly by the aam aadmi party i was boycotted by them i was boycotted by the bjp when i questioned the late sushma swaraj and you know at that point of time vasundhara raje and lalit modi during uh, uh, lalit gate i have highest respect for individuals but i was only doing a story and so, even a pmo when you asked so, that question uh, during musharraf visit when you asked that question i mean in the pmo i kn- i know they said never again will we invite or no it's it's so okay that, they i yeah. got i got invited once to a prime minister's press conference in 2011 and that is when i asked uh, manmohan singh and he about the scams and he spoke about the compulsions of coalition politics so i was looking at it as a reporter i got news points out of all my interviews mm-hmm. about the rahul gandhi interview ha, the Musharraf interview became a news theory. point mm. yeah. yeah the interview did. became a news point which was not the intention i was just simply doing a straight forward yeah. so chat. Th- so you've been in this rarefied air where you were in you've met him and all none i have met him so not a rarefied lot of air yes yes how many Who's people who's rarefied air how many how people, people have, have met the first family so co- of the congress you have interviewed sonia Please gandhi and that. rahul gandhi yeah. nobody few people done can both. boast of that So no no just but I I I object to the use no, of the no, phrase it's verified <laughs> it's verified so so you you see him you've seen him yes. right in this sort of new relaunching that they're trying to do with this bharat jodo and etc do you think he can i mean he's a credible opposition or can he put up a real fight against the bjp election machinery now this is a conversation only in lutians delhi hmm. this whole conversation can the congress do it can it be done is a conversation that is happening within a 10 to 10 square kilometer area in this city i can assure you that and it is a conversation which is obsessing them and i think that i think that people on in, in delhi media should go out of the city and then experience outside this is not a conversation outside not a conversation outside any party any individual can 
transform themselves but they have to be connected to this country yeah. in spirit in spirit not through social media campaigns not through what you call minders mm. uh, we have if we want to have a political party with its 53 year old debutants and 70 75 year old minders good for them they can keep relaunching themselves i have no problem with it but it is not a matter which uh, which i spend too much time thinking about in this country there are so many things to do i really don't have an opinion on it hmm. uh, if you ask you asking me for my guess no yeah not in this way not in this way. not in this carefully manicured way ishan hmm. anything that is uh, that is true is always uh, uh, it comes out as 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 raw anything which is true is not manicured is not well planned it does not need minders if you are true and you're going to be accepted by the people of this country any political leader who rises from the masses will be accepted by the people of india in the future right and anyone who goes through a political finishing school hmm. right done by people who've lost themselves will never be successful in this country that is what i am observing i mean I, it's not then i need to be right but that's my sense of it ishan country has moved on hmm. the country has moved on and people are very aware very aware you know they don't look up any more to any individual they don't look at anybody as a first family yeah. they don't look at anyone having being first among equals any more there is there is a competitive spirit mm. which the prime minister alluded to in his speech when he spoke about an aspirational country right an aspirational country will not look up to someone because they are from a family this is my view and i i love that aspirational aspect of india but the narrative in delhi is still stuck 20 years back they're still asking in 2022 the questions which became irrelevant somewhere around 2006 2007 yeah. and this this narrative these people from delhi that you like to put it their their desperate need for validation from the west and western media especially yeah you still see that we yeah, desperately people in the power circles of of old who aren't in in the charmed lot anymore you think they still crave that sort of western sort of yes to what they're doing i have not come enough to this city to feel it mm. <laughs> to, fact is ishan trust me i'll do an analysis of this and give you an answer but answer roughly again guesstimate to your very straightforward question is i presume yes i presume yes yeah. but 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 you know what happens things take time to change ishan there is something called the domino effect there's something called the trickle down effect things change at the top people tell us corruption goes at the top why does it go at the bottom it will take time because because it will take a whole value system and sometimes that can take half a generation to go through mm -hmm. the changes that we brought about in the indian media around 2010 the fullness of these changes will be evident around 2025 this is my sense of it if it has taken me and people who worked with me a decade and a half to bring about a cyclical change in journalism then as a country it will take equally long yeah. changes in country's economy culture society ways of thinking media sometimes take a period of time and it will not read one individual or one organization or one political party to do it it will have to be a overall effort so when i when i talk, when i when i when i when i look at the country people say you know 20 20, 20 you know 100 years 2047 i somewhere look around the country 2030 2032 because in my own sense i'm looking at it in terms of generations yeah see i'll tell you a simple answer to your question ishan when people who were born in the cell phone age become the principal uh, wage earners in their families hmm. right which means i'm saying people born around 1996 hmm. right when they turn 30 say approximately which is about 2026 that is when you'll see the fullness of the change so i'm very optimistic about india 2025 2026 because you know it's a combination of things and i don't know if i'm communicating this well enough i'm a student of sociology and the reason i tell you is because economic sociology people everything is linked we are going through a digital revolution yeah you know your generation yeah. i'm talking of your generation is fully a digital generation right your approach to life will be very different your responses will be very different right you and but the challenge for for us is to put in your generation mm. the strong values of nationalism and to for you to believe in nation first so when we talk about media when we talk about political parties when we talk about things changing i can equally sit here and tell you oh you know what people in lutians are 
are cut off or insulated. But I'm not saying that. I'm making it as a sociological observation that if you come to Delhi five years from now, you'll see a change in thinking. Mm. There are still a lot of people who are living in a sense of nostalgia. Right. They are looking for the return of the past. Mm. I can understand. It is true everywhere. In you think that there aren't enough people, you know, who are for looking for the return of the left in Bengal, for example. You know, they, they're, yeah. the people look back at the glory days and say we associate with that with our good times. But I would say that your good times are gone. The good times for the people should come. What I'm seeing overall is a sense of decentralization in this country, right? Mm. And media, society, everything is a reflection of that. So there is no easy answer to your question, but. I I would say that there is going to be a hockey stick change in this country after 2025. By 2030, we'll be living in a different country. By 2035, mm -hmm. by 2035, this country would truly have been transformed. I would say confidently today, you will not wait for 2047 to for India to be a superpower. The period of superpowerdom will come quicker than people expect, and you will see it happening quicker as. If we have political stability, social stability over the next few years, this aspirational, assertive sort of population mm. that you're talking about, mm. they will. I mean, there will be roadblocks. I mean, yeah. they. Th this is what it is, right? I, I, in my opinion, the Western media and all that, at least some parts of the Western media. I mean, they don't like this assertive India. I think over there, this is happening, and you can see it in the echo chamber of the, say, the Foreign Correspondents Club. They have a similar sort of news mm. angle to every story that India comes out of. You know, so yeah, yeah. I mean. And you have worked with a foreign partner in the past as well. We work with a foreign partner too. We see it over there. I mean, how do you look at it? You know, in this, there's this newspaper called the Financial Times in London. Right. They did a see interview with me as part of this lunch with the FT series, and I had spoken about my aspirations to go global at that point of time, and I found that when they finally published a full page hmm. with my interview, they presented me as this sort of you know slightly uh, right of center, uh, you know. person who is not very grounded in reality on what can be done and that was because they felt that what i said at that point of time about indian media going global is an impossibility now i tell you today if i say the same thing in london today if i say the same thing in moscow today that i said in 2013 14 15 they would take me more seriously See, correct right. and not just true of me smita i would say true of a lot of people because india is being taken seriously yeah india is being truly taken seriously and i think that it's very important for the indian media to go out of this crabish mentality of fighting with each other to look about what is the purpose that they want to serve towards the country so i am i am i am very excited that's why i say smita that i don't like the sense of bitterness hmm. i hate you you hate me oh you are this party that party yes. come on yeah i think we are not serving the country well True. So we can, we can we can we can coexist, but we can have different ideas as well. Of course, exactly. Yes. yes. Oh, on course. that point, <laughs> thank you so much, Arnab, for your thank time. You, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And I wish you and your podcast all the very best. Thank you. And I hope I didn't say anything out of turn. No, absolutely not. It's been very illuminating. And illuminating. Hope, yes. That is the Let's last thing that people say to me. <laughs> It's been very interesting, and we've not quarrelled, we've not fought, we've not no. disagreed on anything. Different points of view at yes, times, yes. but yeah, very interesting uh, conversation, especially about where media is going, where it's headed, and uh, an interesting insight as to what you went through in you know during that trying yeah. period from 2020 to 2022, and hoping for better times thank for you. you ahead. Thank All you, the Smita. best. Thank now. you, Smita, and thank Thanks. you, Ishan. Thank, thank you, Ishan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching or listening into ANI podcast with Smita Prakash. Do rate, like, or subscribe on whichever channel you heard this or watched it. Namaste, Jai Hind.